Hello everybody, Rose here. Tonight I'm doing another video talking about S Jam and Foodie Beauty. So I just did a react video to the community post that Foodie posted because of S Jam. Uh, S Jam is a beezer who has been extremely generous with Foodie in the past, giving her thousands of dollars in super chats. Well, this person, S Jam, he lives in the Ontario area, and he decided to take it upon himself to go in real life and come visit Foodie. Now, depending on who you talk to, the stories about what happened are conflicting. S Jam is on his end saying that Foodie was aware about him coming, and Foodie is on her end saying, I was not aware, and you just showed up unannounced. So you got these two people with two different stories and everybody wondering which one is actually true. Well, S Jam has a channel on YouTube and he decided to do a very short live stream going off on Foodie. And I would like to give credit to two channels that got pieces of that live for capturing it. The first one is Nashi Queen. And the other one is Sandy, and I will be putting the link for their videos in the description for anyone to check out. And please do and give them a like and perhaps even a sub because they captured the live. And without this, I would not be able to react to it. So let me just go ahead and share the screen so you guys can see who S Jam is and what he has to say. Let's start with. Sandy's short clip, uh, which is like a minute long. Are you fucking me? I'm giving it good. I'm hyper. I'm cool. Well, fuck up. Fucking place up, you goddamn slob. Fucking loser. Fuck you. And fuck you. Fuck you, P2. Fuck you and your fucking everything. Okay? Hope you're in fucking jail. You'll be definitely getting sued. Buy me. Bye, bitch. Fuck you. So my question is, S. Jam, what exactly are you going to sue Foodie for? You sent her super chats through her YouTube channel. It wasn't like she took the money out of your PayPal account illegally. You gave her that money. You chose to do that. What exactly could you sue Foodie for? So kind of weird. He didn't turn the stream completely off and the heavy breathing kind of weird. Uh, again, Sandy, thank you very much for posting that clip uh, because S Jam is doing these clips and dirty deleting, much like he did when he was live streaming himself going to Foodie's house, and uh, he deleted that as well. Let's go over here. Oops, sorry. To the clip from Nashi Queen, which is a bit more to that particular stream. It's snowing for two fucking years, there, hasn't it? It's snowing for two fucking years there, hasn't it? We always like to talk about peasants. Oh, oh I'm so beautiful, Chantal. Oh, I'm so beautiful. Snowing. Snowing. It's been snowing for two fucking years there, hasn't it? You know, when I saw that clip initially, I'm like, what is he talking about? Snowing for two years. I can't say for sure what he's talking about. Only he would know. But we all know that Chantal indulges in the powdery party favors. If he gets on the phone with Chantal and they talk, perhaps she's revealed to S Jam that she likes the powdery party favors, and that's what he's referring to. Snowing for two years. Is that his way of saying that I know about your little habits 
and because I'm angry with you, I'm going to vent about you online and kind of say without saying what's going on. It kind of sounds like it because I don't know what else he could be talking about snowing for two years. It's not winter. <laughs> it's not in the winter where it would be actually snowing. So is that what he means? It kind of sounds like it. So that was S jam. That was the Beezer that went to Chantal's house. Whether he was invited or not, he still went. He drove eight hours to see Chantal. And I would like to say that I find it unusual that someone would drive that far if there wasn't some kind of a promise or an expectation that they're driving that long and that much to meet up with somebody. I, I just can't see somebody driving that far and that long without there being a reason for them to do so. Could he be a person that he's driving there and he did it all on his own without any provocation from Foodie? Perhaps, perhaps. But Foodie said something in her lives tonight that was very curious. And I'd like to show that to you as well. So here's Foodie. Here's Foodie. She said something really, really curious about S Jam. Yes, she did. Something about needing, he needed confirmation. Let's watch. The mini plates. Square mini plates. That. You're going to see. This is going to be like the most bomb girl cheese. I'm gonna call it ghetto grilled cheese. Is that okay? Is that bad? Tell me the truth. I need to know. Is that too offensive or is it okay? Oh, that smells good. The garlic butter? Ooh, I burnt it. And by the way, S Jam did not go home after his failed meeting with Foodie. He's staying in a motel. He's staying at a motel or a hotel in Orleans. So he's still close by Foodie. Okay, it's just going to be infused, I guess. <laughs> Forgot you can burn spice. I was warned of that. Okay, so just melt the butter. Someone told me to put melted or uh, put butter, mix the butter. Or put a little bit of garlic powder on top and grilled cheese. Okay, and then put it in the microwave to melt it a little bit. You know, I don't care. But, um, Hey guys, who's crazy? Never use mail? Why not? Who's in the city? What are we talking about? What? Yeah, what about mail? Mail is good. Why not mail? What would mail do? Just like a very little bit on the bread <laughs> on each slice, and then you put cheese. I'm waiting for the part where she talks about S jam. They call these craft singles. What do you guys call them? 
and they're very weird, but I, can, I love grilled cheese with these. I don't know why, but I just do. I mean, I don't know why. I don't know why. I just do. Coming up, y'all. See, we just stop focusing on. I'm gonna time. diner and do grilled cheeses. I love grilled cheeses, and I have a passion for food. That was my dream with Natter, though. But so does he. He like wanted a falafel truck. Dreams lost or dreams lost, right? What? I should have got some this. Yeah. You have no one to be angry at but yourself. You invited yourself. You didn't wait for my confirmation. You're being invasive. Respect my wish to privacy. Respect my wish to be like distance from you for now. Don't take it personal. Just do it is what it is. If it was your choice to get in your car and drive here, not mine. So you can't be mad at me. And yes, if you continue to harass me, I will get the cops involved. Absolutely. Let me out the fuck alone. Jesus. So, she just said you didn't you didn't wait for my confirm confirmation confirmation of what whether she was okay with it or not or she was going to be home or what exactly did she mean by confirmation? Here's what I think. I think that this is just my thought. Okay, my feeling. I think that she and SJM talked on the phone and maybe she gave the impression that she wanted to meet him and so maybe he got excited and drove all that way to meet her and then she backed out. So he drove eight hours to meet her and then she backed out. I think that's what happened. I mean, he has her phone number. He talks to her on Instagram. I just can't see him driving eight hours for nothing. That's a long, long way to drive for somebody. And he says all he wanted to do was just have Foodie wave at him from her window. Now, I've seen plenty of her live streams, enough to know that her apartment is far, far away from the parking lot, far away. So how in the world would she be able to wave at him from a window and he would see it? I mean, she's got quite the walkway up to her house. I don't know what was said on the phone between those two. I don't know the interactions. All I can do is guess. But I just have the feeling that maybe they were supposed to meet up but maybe he screwed up by live streaming himself, openly saying, I'm going to see Foodie. And perhaps because of that, she backed out. Because maybe he wasn't supposed to tell. Maybe he wasn't supposed to tell people that he was going to see Foodie that night. And so she backed out. She backed completely out. Because. SJM is a supporter of the, the bigger ladies on YouTube. Foodie is not the only one. He's given money to other ladies on YouTube, and they've said so in their videos. Troll Detective did an excellent video on the matter. 
uh, showing that SJM is a bit on the creepy side of him supporting other ladies. And he just made the mistake of putting everything out there that he was going to go see Foodie and that freaked her out. Maybe he wasn't supposed to tell. And because he did, she's like, no, 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 I can't see you right now. But he's in Orleans. He's in a motel. So he has not gone home yet. I don't know if that's because it's just too late of an hour for him to go home. Uh, I mean, he did drive for eight hours. But he's not gone home yet. I don't know if these two will see each other later. But you just saw the live stream that he did. He didn't seem very happy with Foodie. And here she is reacting to it. Like I do, did I do anything wrong? I don't know. Like I'm stressed out. Like should I call the cops? I don't know. This is when it's nice to have a boyfriend that likes to kick everyone's ass. But no, I'm just joking. <laughs> Ow! I think P will protect me with the sword. Down under. Remember, because we must watch Nashi Queen's video. What? No, I can't watch that. I'll be freaked out. Down under. I'll be freaked out and, and have a panic attack. Can somebody just record the video so I have like evidence of it? He'll delete it. Somebody has it recorded, right? You said Nashi Queen? Okay. Thank you, Nashi Queen. I'm glad that some people fucking watch every single thing I do. And this yeah, and you know what? You complain about the reaction channels. Oh, I hate them. They're horrible people. They're clout chasers. They should get their own content. But yet in situations like this, you love the, the channels that capture stuff, right? Because it suits you and it serves your purpose. This is something to me. It's true. Okay. Oh, yeah, baby. You know, I can almost guess what's going through her head right now. It's not that she's afraid of SGM. I can almost see the thoughts in her mind right now. She's thinking, oh, crap, what do I do? This Beezer is the one that gives me the most money, and I have made him angry. And if I've made him angry, he's not going to be generous anymore. I won't get a thousand to two thousand dollars in super chats. How do I fix this? I don't know if I can fix this. One of my most generous beezers is angry just because I didn't open my front door and say hello. <laughs> Is the door locked? You know, I remember all those live streams where she acted like she was afraid of Natter. Oh, I need it. I need security cameras. I need a safety code word like paper clips. And here's S Jam, and she's acting all afraid of him. And you know what? She might have reason to be. 
You know, SGM is acting very unhinged and he's in Orleans. See, this is what happens, Chantal, when you play with people. This is what happens. I'm not saying it's right for one person to stalk another person, but this is why it's a really, really bad idea to get on YouTube and play with people's feelings and emotions and give everybody the impression that you look at everybody as friends and you overshare details of your life and there's nothing private. You sometimes get situations like this. <laughs> I legit like have a stalker, a fucking creepy stalker, who made a creepy video. He's cre freaking out in a hotel room right now in Ottawa. Like he drove, he drove like eight hours all the way here. Like it's my fault. I never answered his calls. I have all the receipts. I'm gonna have to put to a video like a fucking my stalker video now or what? Like, like I just I, I told people like he's having nightmares pretty much when I'm like gonna be talking to Phil. I'm probably just being dramatic, aren't I? Okay, you had a PR celebrity bumper. She's not a celebrity, Pete. She wishes she were, but she's not. <laughs> What are you doing? Are you gonna change it tomorrow? Yeah. Look at my hair; it's greasy. He's in a motel. Oh, bro! Ah. So imagine being high as a kite, higher than any of us could ever imagine. You're high, high, high. And you get one of your fans freaking out on you while you're high. <laughs> And you're so high that your mind is just flipping out about what to do and how to handle it. That's so gross. You can stay, you know? I get tired of women getting blamed for someone assuming they can be invasive in someone's life. I know. He doesn't know my phone number. He called me on Instagram. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Do I believe that he has her Insta and they talk there? Yes. But I believe that he has her phone number. I believe that he does. Y'all want to know why I think that? Because if you guys remember back in the day, she had her mod Karate Joe. And although I cannot confirm with receipts, my feeling off Karate Joe was he was a big time feeder. Perhaps giving Chantal lots of money because Chantal listened to Karate Joe. Karate Joe would literally tell her what restaurants, what fast food restaurants to go to when she wanted to do her late night drives. And he would tell her what to order. And he's always saying, big is beautiful. And he would literally tell her when to get off stream. Chantal let Karate Joe boss her around. You have to wonder why she was okay with that. Why was she okay with Karate Joe bossing her around? Only one reason that I could think of, he was giving her lots of money. Because he was giving her lots of money. 
Now here's SJAM. And he said in his messages, he has her phone number. He also said that he has her Instagram. You know, Chantal's money hungry. I can see her giving out her phone number to a big money whale beezer to talk to him, to maybe convince him to send her money through PayPal or Cash App or something. That's that's her style. Messenger. People are just trying to scare you. Because creepy, but it's not homicidal. Don't call the police. Okay. Yes. Being in a hotel in Ottawa is not illegal. You're right. But if he's making threatening videos in a hotel near me, that is might a little cause for concern. I would call the police with that. But if he's not threatening me, then I just yeah. He, I would prefer him be in a hotel so that he can. I don't know. Fuck, like, why is he in a hotel nearby than me? Why is he in a hotel in Orleans? If why are you in a hotel near me in or fucking Orleans? If you weren't fucking coming to see me, if you were just coming to sightsee, you were driving by my house. I have the messages. I can. I fucking want to read them. Like next time I go live from my computer, I'll read them. Unless he deletes them, I don't know if you can delete them or what. But. So that's what I'm talking about. See? So I find it hard to believe that SJM would just drive from where he was to where she is without saying a single word, just showing up there and say, surprise. He probably sent her tons of messages to let her know that he was on the way. And I don't know if, you know, she said, I don't know. I don't know if I want to see you. Or if she did and then backed out. I, I, I don't know what to believe here, y'all. But I just don't believe somebody would drive eight hours unless they were going to do something or see somebody when they got to their destination. Yeah, you don't know what he's capable of. I mean, you don't know. He's not, you don't know for sure. People say, say that about people all the time. You're not capable of that. I don't know. He's got some strange behaviors a little bit. I mean, that are not normal. He obsessively fucking called me back to back in the middle of the night a million times. I had to block him. It fucking annoyed the fuck out of me and it kind of freaked me out. And see, Chantal, you'll get some people like that. People that will give you lots of money. And then because they give you lots of money, they feel like they own you and you owe them something. But that's kind of the same attitude you have with Natter. How many times have we heard you? say about Natter, look at all that I've done for him. I, I bought him this and I bought him food and I paid for his rent. So you're kind of, in a way, the same kind of person. You're giving money for a purpose because you want to own that person or you want them to owe you. You're not giving money out of true generosity. You want something back. You want to own the person. You want to make them in, you want to create a debt between the two of you, like they are indebted to you. And because they're indebted to you, they will always have to deal with you. You don't really want love. You want someone to need you because if the person loves you, they have the option to walk away because they are supporting themselves and they have the power to walk. You don't want love, you want needs. You want someone to need you because if they need you financially, there's less of a chance of them walking away from you. You did it to Pete's and you're doing it to Natter. And now you're kind of getting a taste of your own medicine. Of here's someone being generous to you, or they have been generous, and now they feel like you owe them and they're out to collect payment. I'm not saying SJM or anybody should go and stalk anyone because that's incorrect behavior. But I'm saying is there's that same kind of attitude, the same kind of attitude that she had with Natter, somebody has with her now. What the fuck was I gonna pay here? Would you please make a report? He titled the live 9-11 Ottawa. What? Are 
Great for materials. I found his Instagram a bit weird. Like, he had a weird obsession with Christmas ornaments. And cats. And you got a weird obsession with crackheads. Next. There's something about straight men who are obsessed with cats that is kind of weird. They're all crazy. Men who love cats are nuts. All of them. So you prefer a crackhead that doesn't like cats. Is that it? Kubrick loved cats. Karate Joe loved cats. Fuck, there's parallels here. Yeah. Yeah, you've had some pretty weird ones in your bunch. You know, Sandy and Ange, they thought that they were friends with you. Obviously, that wasn't true. Then you've got Austin Beezer, who's different. You've got Missy Moo, who was obsessed with you. And now you've got this joker, S-Jam. So you got like four or five people that their behavior wasn't normal. Their behaviors with for you wasn't normal. They were almost obsessive fans. You know, you need you need to learn a lesson from this, Chantal. I'm scared. No, you're not. You're high. Oh my god. Sorry, the <laughs> fuck. What? What can I make to eat pasta? Baked cookies? I don't think I have anything. What kind of cookies can I make? For dinner, I mean, what I'm going to make for. Oh, and by the way, Chantal, just a side note, you're high as a kite right now. And earlier you asked the question, why am I not losing weight? As I said earlier, this is why. Because maybe you might be doing the powder party favor to stave off your hunger. But at night, right before you go to bed, you do the edibles. And that stimulates your hunger. And then you just want to eat everything in the kitchen. Girl, the answer is right in front of your face. The fact that you got a problem with food, you haven't addressed it, you haven't gotten into therapy for it, you're not aware of your triggers, or if you are, you don't care. So you do something to keep yourself from eating all day, and then you go to town on the food at night. I never asked anybody in private for money, ever. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Not a single fan, not a single friend. I've never asked to fucking borrow money. Excuse me, what? Huh, what? Say that again? You did, you did what? Say that one more time. I never asked anybody for money. Recently, you said you went to your family for money. Doesn't that qualify as asking other people for money? And weren't you with Pete's and you got money from him and you ruined his credit, ran up his credit cards? You, you never borrowed money from people. From a friend. But there's no shame in needing to ask to borrow money. Yeah, borrowing money means at some point you're going to pay it back. Have you paid back the money you owe Pete's? Are you going to pay back the money that you owe your family? Are you going to pay down the credit card debt that you caused with Pete's? Have you done any of that? No. And I find it outrageous that you borrowed money from your family and then you were running around town buying fast food, buying your edibles and whatnot. You didn't need that money for necessities. You just wanted to run around town and do your usual thing before payday. There's no shame in not having fucking money. How can we, how can we, Evaluate us as a person based on how much money we have. Do human beings have monetary value? 
that's so fucked up no we don't have that's rich coming from somebody that every time sets up a platform anywhere on the internet you set up the paywall so you're over here preaching about is money important well apparently it's important to you because you don't talk for free do you you make sure to charge for your conversation ma'am you make sure to charge people for things and then you don't give them what they pay for hello only fans um the postcard club um twitch people sub to your twitch and you haven't streamed on there in the longest great day so money is just currency it's a way through life so and for you it's a way to escape from life so that you don't have to truly live it's 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 a way to use to escape actually being part of life if you don't have much but you make do and you get through life anyway and you fucking hustle and you still are happy regardless good for you what do you know about hustling you don't know you know nothing about hustling you're on youtube making money doing fuck all you know the secret it's a secret life is a secret the hot pot. You don't want to try it? And then everybody forgot they even. Actually, everyone, I fucking hated them after. I don't. Oh, I'm not going to review these. <laughs> so basically, this is her content. Every night every day get online turn the camera on eat babble about nothing get high get high as a kite make everybody watch talk about natter moan and groan about natter rage about natter mention him in some way oh he's so cute blah 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 this is her content oversharing and all the oversharing leads to some people in her audience getting too close and getting too obsessive she's always yelling and screaming about privacy but how can you have privacy when you tell people your phone number you give out your phone number talking to people on your insta sharing your address because you want your fans to send you free stuff where is the element of privacy when you share everything including information that nobody should know no one should know your phone number chantal no one should know your address no one should be talking to you on the phone unless you absolutely know them you're lucky that what's happened to you didn't happen before you know, you people have known some of your information for the longest, and only now are you getting somebody that's a little bit unhinged, and he is, uh, he's angry. He's angry at you. And I don't think you're really scared of S-Jam. I think you're more scared of the fact that he's a big money whale, and you've made him angry, and the only thing you're scared about is, how can I fix this? My big money whale is angry at me. How can I fix this? How can I keep the money flowing from that person? Because if I make him angry, he's going to cut me off and give that money to somebody else. That's the only thing you're truly scared of in life. You're not scared of your health getting bad, but you continue to eat badly. You're not scared of doing drugs. You do the drugs you're not scared of anything not even death you flirt with death all the time with the drugs and the diet and just the many things you do the only thing that scares you to death is losing money because money is the only thing keeping your world going keeping your little fantasy bubble going money is that safety net that you fall into time and time again and if the safety net's not there, you're gonna hit the ground hard and it's gonna hurt. And SJM has given you a lot of money, thousands of dollars, 
thousands. And you don't want to lose that. If you lose the money, you lose everything else in your life. So you're not afraid of SJAM in any capacity except for losing all of those really big super chats that you've gotten so spoiled on. And I don't know who to believe here. I don't know if he's telling the truth about you knew he was coming or he just showed up there. But my feeling is that you gave the impression at least that perhaps you were going to meet him, maybe guaranteed meeting or perhaps, and maybe he just took the maybe and ran with it. But I just find it unusual that somebody would drive eight hours for nothing. I, I, I kind of lean in the direction that you promised him something, something of value, something that I really wanted for him to go all that way. That's what I think. I think maybe you gave him the impression that he would meet you and talk to you or something. I mean, why else would he drive eight, eight hours? Why would he be so angry right now if all that you were gonna do is wave from a window? There's, there's an untold story here, y'all. Don't know what it is, but I'll be looking out for the details to see if there's more to this. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this React video. If you have, please like and subscribe and leave a comment. Thanks for watching and please take care. Bye-bye.